Hello and welcome to Smart Training 365. This is Mo Larby. Uh, just before we start talking uh, to our guest today, which we will be talking about uh, an interesting subject that you all been waiting for, which is uh, testosterone, uh, about supplements to uh, you know uh, that you can use instead of like TRT. Um, so I'll tell you all about like the subject that you, we will be discussing. Uh, don't miss our seminar this Saturday at 10 a.m. Uh, January the 22nd uh, Central Time. You will only be able to uh, watch it live, so uh, there will there won't be a replay. It's not going to be available on YouTube after that. Don't miss it. All right, now uh, I'm going to talk to someone that I really uh, find fascinating because I learned a lot from him and it's worth sharing his information on Smart Training 365. You're gonna find this very interesting. And uh, also we will be talking about a subject that many of you uh, wanted to, uh, to talk about or ask questions. And I think he's the right, in, like he's the right person to talk about this. So ladies and gentlemen, Jacobus, welcome to uh, Smart Training 365. Thank you, Mo. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity and a very interesting topic that is mind-boggling to both men and women. And there is a lot of misunderstanding about hormones. And I wouldn't say I'm the total expert, but I understand enough of it that I'm able to work with it and explain it to people and help them to start feeling better. Perfect. So, Jacobus, before we start uh, talking about, uh, you know, uh, the topics today. Do you mind introducing yourself to the people so they know who you are? Yeah, my name is uh, Jacobus Holloway, and that is spelled H-O-L-L-E-W-I-J-N. I-J is Dutch, it's a vowel, actually. Oh. so Holloway. And I was born in the Netherlands, and I met my wife over there in high school, and we're still together. And what happened was when we were done with high school, we met some friends as we were going to college, met some friends who were into vegetarianism. And mm -hmm. so we thought that was fascinating. So we did that. And then we went a year later, they introduced us into macrobiotics. So we thought that was really interesting too. So we were eating with chopsticks and we were chewing our food 80 times and we're drinking. <laughs> so they say, drink your food and, and eat your liquids. So we drink only three cups, a day of liquid and uh, everything was cooked and it was great. We liked it. You know, we were young and we we're losing weight and we felt great and we had lots of energy. And then what happened was that uh, we kind of moved into a raw food diet and we did some fasting and cleansing and three day fast, 10 day fasts and one day fast and do enemas and colonics. And we were just totally into this stuff. And then we had, uh, we had our first son actually we have one son and two girls and so we had our first child and you know life goes a little bit more like normal you uh, you do health you eat healthy but it was not we were not fanatic anymore and mm -hmm. we went on kind of a spiritual journey for about 16 17 years and life gets busy and we just enjoyed ourselves and then in 1994 i uh, i was born in 59 so i'm 62 so in 94 Living in Bozeman, Montana, I was asked, invited to start working at a health food store. It was January 94, so it's been 28 years for me. I was invited to start working at a health food store, and I thought, well, you know, I had been to chef school. In the meanwhile, I had cooked, but I knew nothing about supplements, and that was actually the thing that people were coming in for, with questions. Mm -hmm. I knew about food, and we had bulk products, and we had... We had health foods in there. It was a health food store, but it was a section, pretty big section that was dietary supplements. And so I had to read a lot and talk to customers and ask them what they had already tried, et cetera, et cetera. So I slowly but surely got interested more into a, an aspect of health that I was only involved in diet, and, you know, living healthy and thinking clearly and spirituality. And now I was learning more by dietary supplements. 
And so I worked for that place originally for about five and a half years. It was a wonderful time. I was the manager. And uh, we had some disagreements and I left. But I was doing these commercials on the radio, these one minute commercials about health. And I did a new one every week. And I, there were little pearls of wisdom. Mm -hmm. And so I call them health pearls. And actually, I'm still doing them today. But I wasn't doing them for a while. And I would walk downtown and there was a coffee shop and I would stand over there at the counter. And I hadn't done any commercials for about a year. And I'm ordering my coffee. And this person next to me says, uh, hey, you're that guy from the radio. And I said, you, you remember that? He said, oh, yeah, your voice is very clear, <laughs> very distinct. Mm, he recognized so, you. I had a good relationship with the, with the radio because I was doing those, I had done those commercials for years. So I went back to the radio station and I talked to the program director on the talk radio and I said, hey, people recognize my voice. I would actually, I love talking to people. Do you mind if I try to do a radio show? And he said, do you think you can cover six months and I said I'm sure there's enough doctors and physicians and practitioners to talk to and I didn't want to just talk about alternative health I also wanted to talk to the medical doctors and the PhDs and the, the research of people who've written books I just wanted to pick their brain and learn more about these different topics so he gave me a chance and that was in July of 2000 and I ended up doing that show for 19 plus years. I, I, I stopped doing it in September 2019. And the re main reason was that uh, I had always done it for free. I never been paid. Uh, no contract was signed. And, but I did find out that the radio station said that they owned my show. I go like, well, I put too much time and effort in. I spent too much money on editing and inviting people for lunch or breakfast before the show. Right. So I decided, you know, maybe I just got to put it on hold and at some point work on my own podcasts right. and educate people, but not give it away. And so I quit in 2019, but I had really built up this tremendous, I have to say, this tremendous knowledge from talking to people who are so ingrained in the field of health chiropractors, homeopathic doctors, naturopath, people who talk about hormones, people talking about the problems in medicine, uh, insurance, uh, spirituality, thyroid, adrenals, whatever it was, so many topics. I ended up doing 914 live radio wow. shows, three hours every week, every Saturday morning. So I feel I felt extremely blessed that I had that opportunity. Now in I went back, I worked for a few other stores, and then in 2007, April 2007, I opened up my own store, and I gave it the same name as the, uh, as the radio show, so I called it Gesundheit Nutrition Center in this case, and so that's what we've been doing, so learning more about dietary supplements, there is so much coming out, it's a fascinating industry, just like you, Mo, I'm very motivated because it's so such an exciting field to be in. It's not stagnant. It's always growing and changing and moving. And so that is kind of my background, if that, uh, that helps. What a background. Amazing. <laughs> Thanks. So uh, that's the reason, to be honest, why I wanted you to be uh, on this video, because I believe that you have... Uh, a lot to share and a lot of wisdom and knowledge and you know smart training is not only about biomechanics and the best exercise and what is the best movement to work this muscle you know if you if you don't you know take care of the other aspect outside the gym you're not going to be able to achieve the results that you know you think you will be getting from the gym that's why i want to talk to you about something which is a healthy mind is a healthy body. What does that mean to you? And to, based on also your experience with the, the people that you worked with? Well, I've learned over time that we all, number one, we're all different. So what works for one may not work for another person, no matter how hard they try. And part of that is because we all have our own history. We all, everybody in, on this planet could probably write a book or at least a chapter about True. how their life has been. 
because it's unique, the way we feel about experiences, the people we have met, the, the, the parents were born with uh, family, work, experiences, accidents, traumas. It makes us who we are. It makes us unique. Unique, yeah. It makes us very unique. And so in that uniqueness, if the, the drive comes up to say, I want to be healthier, I want to be better, we start making efforts. We try to fit it in our daily schedule. And for some people, that is easy to do. And other people, it's not easy to do. But all that starts happening in the mind. And in my opinion, Mo, that is really more and more I talk to people about the coach and the athlete. I, I tell them there is a section above the neck that is the brain, right? And But we call it, it, I call it the coach because it always talks to us. It's always trying to tell us what to do next or what we forgot to do or who we are or the emotions we got to deal with. That happens, it's formulated. It's formulated over here. Below the neck, we have the athlete. We have the body. The athlete is listening to the coach. If it is 9.30 at night and your coach tells you, I want you to run 10 more laps around the field before you go to sleep, in a way, we would do it because the brain says so and we just follow orders. So after you run one lap, you're exhausted. You have your hands on your knees, but the coach says, hey, you got nine more laps to go. Let's go. Yeah, but coach, I can't do this anymore. Well, I don't care. Crawl. I don't care. Just get it done. You have till midnight to get it done. There are things that we push upon ourselves and we do things because we have this drive. There is something telling us this is what we need to do, but it is not always conducive to the physical body. So we need to make sure it's one thing that we feed the brain. It's another thing that we nourish the body. Mm -hmm. And what we have learned over time is that the brain loves sugar. As a matter of fact, it runs primarily on sugars. That doesn't mean somebody who doesn't eat sugars that they don't have a brain. Obviously, there is ways to pull sugars out of the food that we eat. But it is we need to take care of the physical body. And that means we have to incorporate more proteins and fats. So the more carbohydrates you eat or crave, and that you ask for, you have a tendency to really, as soon as that food hits your tongue, you love the flavor, it goes through the saliva glands, it goes straight to the brain, and we feel, okay, we feel, yeah, we're back, we're back, okay, what was the question? I'm back with you. We lost it there for a moment. But when we eat more proteins and fats and minerals, we actually find out that the body is being nourished, and the brain kind of calms down because the brain is asking for sugar. But if the body sends a signal to the brain like, hey, I didn't get anything to eat. You want me to run 10 laps, but I have nothing to eat. What we're going to do, then the brain says, oh, we're hungry again. So it eats, again, something that it nibbles. It nibbles away mm -hmm. on now this time. Well, I better don't eat sugar. I better have some chips and salsa. I better have some sour cream or yogurt with maple syrup or you know we think we have all these justifications why we eat what we eat but at the end of the day did we actually get enough protein and fats to not only nourish the body but rebuild the the, the athlete and that is something that often happens where over time not one day not a week but over years we start realizing that the body becomes depleted so I realized that as we are helping the physical body a little bit more, there becomes, there becomes a better balance between the signals that the brain is sending out and the signals that the body is sending to the brain. And so there is a little bit more of a balance. Now, it's not always practical for everybody. And I don't want people to listen to this and say, well, that doesn't work on my life because I'm too busy. That's fine. But the, for everybody... There are choices that we can make. And sometimes there will be a day where we actually are able to spend more time on the body and a little bit less on the brain. And those are the times when we feel a little bit more recharged. And so we find out that is really what we needed to do right now. So the, the body and the mind, the mind is very powerful. 
And some of that, let's not forget, there are emotions, there are traumas, there are things that have happened to us, there is confusion that happened to us at a very young age or when we were teenagers. And uh, we don't always have time to process it at a time. Uh, how many times have we heard of people who lost a loved one or a dog or they lost a job or they had to move, they had to, uh, there was an accident and they had to deal with that, that trauma. It's almost like we're able to, to work on that right away because tomorrow the sun goes up and we got to get up and we got to go back to work or we have to arrange a bunch of stuff, rearrange a bunch of stuff that was thrown upon us. It's one thing that we're able to do that, but not every day. There comes a point when the body is when the body is holding on to all this memory. There was a there was a, a, a well-known book. I don't know if you've heard about it. It's called uh, "The Body Keeps the Score," and it is written by actually a Dutch doctor who has moved to Massachusetts in the seventies. His name is Bessel B E S S E L Bessel. Van der Kolk, K-O-L-K. And Bessel van der Kolk is a PhD. He wrote this book and he started working with Vietnam vets and he realized that the traumas, they're so ingrained, but we have to keep moving on. We have to keep going. So we don't always have time to deal with the deep-seated emotions. But there will come a point when that stuff has to come out and it never comes out straight. It always comes out sideways. It is an ache, it is a pain, it is, a, it, it is fatigue, it is a cancer, it is, goes on the heart, it starts affecting the heart, the liver, the pancreas, the joints, something, wherever is the weakest link in the body, that's usually where the stress comes out. And we go like, what just happened to me? And because we're so in the brain, we go, I have no time to deal with this, I'm gonna go to see a physician. Maybe he can give me a medication. Maybe he can give me an anti-inflammatory. I don't mm -hmm. have time for this. I'm too busy. And so that is why I feel the importance of a little bit more of a balance between body and mind is very important. I agree with you uh, because, you know, in the end of the day, as you said, the body does what the mind says, you know, and let's say if you don't have a clear vision, if you're operating under stress and everything is foggy for you, that will impact your decision, that will impact your, the quality of your life, of your relationship, of your workout, you know. So uh, the mind and the balance is very important in this aspect. And some people, you know, uh, I'm talking about now the in the field of bodybuilding and having a great physique, you know. Some yeah. people, they don't have the, the, the mind body balance but they still Correct. have a great physiques and they still met even though also their life is not balanced you know and many are compensating with for that lack of knowledge with supplementation they might be genetically gifted you know but that's going to be short-lived because we all saw you know many people paying the price at a later age yes. and uh, and you know many things like things that Taking supplements is, you know, the key to that. And sometimes you you find them struggling choosing which supplement they should take. They basically, you know, take any supplement that will say, okay, it will take care of this and this because they feel that they have that problem. So my question to you, based on the people that you worked with and your experience, how can someone know if they need to use a supplement and how they know which supplement to use. You mean just in general? In general, yes. Yeah, um, two things. It is often when we haven't seen somebody for a while, when they see us, they say, you've changed. And you go like, I have? Yeah, you look this way or you sound different. You sound happy. You kind of sound like you're depressed. We don't often see those small changes that happen to us on a daily, weekly, monthly, annual basis. So how do we know if there's a problem? Well, one way is to do a blood test and just find out where your numbers are. 
How is your testosterone? How is your estrogen? How is your progesterone? How is your DHEA? How is your vitamin D3? How is your B12? Deficiency in B12 can cause all kinds of problems. Are you out? Are you not doing enough minerals? Um, the, the, the digestive tract is super important and many people ignore it. They, we, we drink while we eat, we drink before we eat, we drink right after we eat, which means we're actually disturbing the acid in the stomach. The acid in the stomach is there for a reason. It is there to liquefy the food and to make, for example, calcium cell absorbable. So a lot of us, when we drink, we cannot convert calcium in any way, shape or form into a calcium that eventually will be absorbed in, in cells. Well, calcium is very important. So what happens to this calcium now? Well, it gets stuck in the intestines and it can plug up the holes on the villi so you don't absorb the nutrients anymore. And people go like, how come I'm not feeling better? Uh, I'm taking these vitamins and I don't notice anything. Well, maybe because we're not taking the right vitamins or minerals or we have issue obstructions in the intestines. So how do you know if you're deficient or if you need something? A blood test would be a good guide. Now, the problem with the blood test is that the, 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 the reference ranges on a blood test have been disputed over years by different people. Like, are we actually looking at thyroid hormones and are we giving the right uh, numbers? Do we have the, uh, do we, when we look at testosterone, for example, a man's testosterone is anywhere from 220 to 980. Well, 220 is maybe the level of a 75, 80 year old man, where 980 is the level of maybe an 18 or 20 year old man. So if you and I do a blood test and we're somewhere in there, they simply say, well, you're on the normal range. Well, what does that mean normal range? Is that mm -hmm. optimal? Is it really too low? What is the problem? When you talk about men, 99% of men in this country have never heard of the word estradiol, E-S-T-R-A-D-I-O-L, estradiol. Well, guess what? We all, we guys, we make estradiol from our testosterone. Testosterone converts into estradiol through a hormone or through an enzyme called aromatase. So if we go to a doctor and we say, well, my energy is really not that great. Can you, uh, you know, I, I lose my muscle tone, my libido, I have an erection problem. I just don't have the oomph anymore. I'm probably getting older. And this person is maybe 45 years old. They were like, no, that's nothing to do with it. We need to understand, is there a testosterone issue? Is there an estradiol issue? And so there was phenomenal research done on this and we can go into that deeper. But if you don't know what to ask for, and I tell you what, no general practitioner, well, maybe really few, but majority of people that I've talked to say, I've never heard anybody ask me that. A urologist or even an oncologist has ever brought up to men, we should check your estradiol levels. Well, it's a very important aspect why some men cannot build muscle, why we build fat around the middle and why men develop prostate cancer. So with the dietary supplements, I think it is, you can do the, um, uh, you can try, you can take supplements, but number one is always diet. The supplements are literally what it says they do. They supplement your diet and lifestyle. So sometimes you may need more, sometimes you don't. We simply need to find out what it is. B12, vitamin B12. There was a book written about that. That was 25 years of research. It's called, could it be B12? Mm -hmm. And it was Lady Sally Pachulak. She was a, she's a registered nurse. Her husband is a doctor in osteopathy. And she is, I think she lives in Minnesota. She wrote this great book 
in which he says, you look at the level of vitamin B12, and it says, again, just like testosterone, anywhere from 212 to about 980 or 1,000. Well, that is a huge range. Again, young people have a B12 of maybe 980 or 1,000, but an 80-year-old, over time, we simply diminish. And by the time you're 80 years old, you may be around 200. Well, there are a lot of issues that go with that if you are deficient. And by the way, a toddler, a baby and a toddler who are constantly working their mind, they're trying to learn everything around them, their brain is working so hard, their natural B12 production is between 1,100 and 2,000 on a blood test. So are you actually getting enough? Well, if you were in the range, the doctor says you're in the range, but is that enough for you? Then you look at magnesium, the benefits of magnesium. You sometimes don't know mm -hmm. until you try a supplement and notice a difference, excuse me, notice a difference within a week. Notice a difference. And if you, if you say, wow, I, my God, my muscles are not tight anymore. How many people come in and they say, I'm so tight, my muscles ache, or they go to chiropractors all the time. And I said, are you taking magnesium? And they say, no. I said, what is going on? Well, I'm always in pain, but I go to the chiropractor and he fixes me. And I said, okay, a chiropractor adjusts the spine, the joints, the arm, whatever it is. But all that is held together by muscle. And if something tweaks out for whatever reason, then the muscle is being strained. It, it's, it's strained or, you know, and so what happens is if you get it adjusted, the muscle is still strained one way or the other. And within days, that muscle kind of pops that thing back out. So that's why many people, when they go to a chiropractor, within three, four days, they're back in pain and they don't want to go to the chiropractor then. So they just wait another two or three weeks because it gets too expensive. And I say, just start taking magnesium because magnesium is a muscle relaxer. It doesn't, it, it gives you energy. It strengthens the heart muscle. It, 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 it increases blood pressure if it's too low. It lowers blood pressure if it is too high. Magnesium, regulator. What's that? Regulator. It is a regulator for blood pressure. It gives, it balances blood sugars. It uh, helps to build, to absorb the calcium from the intestines into the bloodstream, the portal vein. But also magnesium is naturally involved in more than 400 different enzyme functions in the body. So we don't just have enzymes in the duodenum and in the stomach. We also have them in the muscles, in the heart, in the spleen, in the liver, in the pancreas. We have enzyme functions. So though 400 of function of these functions in our body depend on magnesium before they can actually work. So if you don't process and digest the food that you think you should get, if you take food and you go like, why am I not feeling better? Maybe you're deficient in magnesium. Another one could be zinc because zinc is involved in more than 300 enzyme functions in the body. So minerals are very important. And I talk to people and say, yeah, I drink like a gallon of water a day because I heard drinking water is good. I said, what do you put in the water? Nothing, just water. I said, okay, if you hose down your driveway, it's dirty. You get the hose, you hose it down, you throw water at it. What happens? Well, all the dirt is gone. I said, right, those are your minerals. So people who drink a lot of water, they're flushing out the system. They don't per se feel better and they may not nourish their body. So I tell them, add trace minerals. Trace minerals are made from the salt lake. The salt lake has nine times the concentration of minerals, all the 72 minerals that the ocean has. So if you already know what ocean water tastes like, multiply that times nine. And you put a few drops up to 40 drops or so in your water during the day to replenish minerals hold on to water we need to we need to give the body water we don't have to go crazy but if you just take water that flushes out and grabs anything that is water soluble out of the body you're not feeling any better mm -hmm. you need to nourish the body with nutrients so what supplements are 
what what supplements do you need to take? You you start somewhere, depending on your diet and lifestyle. If people have been stressing most of their life, maybe we need to help them to calm down these adrenal glands that lay on top of the kidneys. Or maybe we just try some B vitamins because B vitamins are great for the nerves that are important for the brain. B12 is just one of them. But B6, B12, and folic acid are very important to help the breakdown of homocysteine. Homocysteine mm -hmm. is one of the things that you no doctor tests you for unless you ask for it. But research has shown that homocysteine levels, elevated homocysteine levels, are 40 times more accurate in predicting a cardiovascular problem than cholesterol ever will. But what mm -hmm. are doctors doing? They simply test you for cholesterol. So they test cholesterol. If you're over 200, they say, or when you're over 200, they say you need to go on some type of drug to lower your your, your cholesterol. Well, why would the body make cholesterol if it's bad for you? There is a function there. We need to learn from cholesterol and not make it a cause of heart disease. The important thing, again, what doctors are not checking is the particle size of the, of the cholesterol. Do we have small particles or do we have large particles on the LDL or the HDL? Large particles, most people think those are the bad ones. No, they bounce around like beach balls in your blood vessel. They never get stuck anywhere. But the tiny ones, any crevice they find in the blood vessel and the artery, they get stuck and they build on each other and they become lumps. And that can become problematic. So if you look at the range on a blood test from what is good on the LDL or the HDL, and you don't know your particle size, you could have lower LDL, let's say 95 or 100 small particles. To me, that is more dangerous than when you have an LDL of, let's say, 150 and you have large particles because they don't do any bad for you. So we need better testing. Why not get tested on homocysteine levels? Why not get tested on a fat that is part of the lipoprotein uh, process that is called APO, APO, APO lipoprotein B. When APO lipoprotein B is elevated, and we're talking about over the number 90, it becomes a risk for heart disease. How many doctors test you for APO lipoprotein B? Not many. If you have APO lipoprotein A, works great for the heart. But apolipoprotein B elevated is difficult, it's hard for the heart. So when we are dealing with these kind of issues, what can, if we know the numbers, then we can say, what can we do to make the particle size better from the cholesterol? Just so you could use uh, fish oil, high EPA fish oil. The amount of EPA, 1,500 to 2,000 milligrams of EPA a day will help to regulate the size of cholesterol molecules. It will help to regulate the flow, the viscosity of blood. So very important. How many people take fish oil? Oh, a lot of them, but they take a capsule or two. Mm -hmm. It may not be enough for them. So some people can do two capsules a day and have no problem, but somebody else may have to take nine capsules a day. And then they go like, I'm not going to take nine capsules. I say, take a tablespoon of liquid, mix it in something, just take it. Take that kind of fat because it is so important for us. So there are numbers that tell us what the problem is, the possible problem. And then based on that knowledge, we can start using dietary supplements in order to find the balance. So when people complain that there's something not right with me, there are usually two reasons. There is one reason that is deficiency. The other one is toxicity. So mm -hmm. either we don't have enough of what we need or we have too much of what we don't need. So that's the toxicity versus the deficiency. And we're constantly trying to fight that battle. And some people have more time during the day to think about these things or to maybe take action. But a lot of people just don't have the time or the knowledge to, and that is not an attack. It's simply what it is. If everybody was knowledgeable, I think the whole world would be a very different place. Exactly. So but we're dealing with the challenges that are thrown at us. And sometimes it is work. 
Sometimes it is grief. Sometimes it is just a busy family life, financial stress, whatever it is that prohibits us from investing in some, in giving ourselves the nutrients that we need in order to have more optimal life quality. The thing is, Mo, we're all going to die. It's a given. Mother Nature is 100% winning on that apartment. The issue, though, is too many people, too many people live only a very short quality of life and die a long death instead of having a long quality of life and die a short death. About nine years ago, Johns Hopkins University came out with a study in which it said that the average American over 65 years old is taking nine, nine prescription drugs every day. So if you know anybody over 65 who doesn't take any, that means there is somebody else who takes up the slack. So the average eight to nine medications every day it's too much. We are not lacking medication. There is a place for medication, mm -hmm. but medications, and, and thank goodness for Western medicine, they have done a lot of good things, but Western medicine never looks at why are we in this because. predicament and where will we be in five or 10 years from now? You cannot medicate yourself out of problems. Just like I, I personally think a doctor should be more of a coach. It should be more of somebody you can check with. How am I doing, doc? And the doctor says, well, I think you're doing, you've made progress in many ways. I think we're going to cut your medication in half. How often does that happen? Not enough. Otherwise, people wouldn't be on so much medication. There is a time and a place for medication, but I don't think that we need to be on blood pressure medication till we die, cholesterol medication, till we die, Alzheimer's medication, till we die, pain pills, till we die. There is no place for that. The body needs to get the nutrients or get rid of the toxicity so that it can function, it can breathe. If, it is, if the cells are plugged, there is no oxygen flowing through. So maybe we need to work a little bit on a detox so that the cell opens up, can breathe again, and can absorb more nutrients, either from food and or from supplements. So that is my answer on that one. What an answer. Amazing. <laughs> wow. Look, you. Uh, you said something before I move to the next subject at the end, which is about detox. I believe detox is very important because let's say if someone feels bad you know is not healthy emotionally not balanced and they decide to take a supplement or to decide to be, get healthy start working out and eat well and supplement mm -hmm. uh the body might not absorb those nutrients and might not you know work properly you're not expecting the body because you just decided to become healthy that the body will do what it's supposed to be as if it's healthy i think uh what is your opinion like shortly uh should Sorry. someone my answer is alone no <laughs> no no it's not it's not like i'm enjoying this conversation a lot you know okay. so uh we're not uh, in a hurry here but uh, in my opinion like uh, the um, detox before starting a supplement or eating healthy is important because the body will absorb or react better what is your what are your thoughts about that I totally agree, but people get confused about all these detoxes. And I think, listen, it, you have to do what works for you. Is it taking more of a fiber? Let's do more of a fiber. Sometimes it also depends on where the person works. If you've been in a laboratory and you've been exposed to a lot of different chemicals, it's probably good to, to cleanse. If you look at a car mechanic who all of a sudden, after 30 years working on cars and oil and grease, yeah. you absorb that through the skin it's maybe good for you to do a detox and you can do ionic food bath. Now people I've heard once a story about this man who was a car mechanic for 35 or 40 years and then he retired and he was so um, tired
tired all the time. He didn't just retire, he was really tired. And so he couldn't sleep at night or he slept during the day and he was just wiped. And so his wife heard about these ionic food baths. Have you ever heard about them? No. You put your feet in this water in a, in a tub and so there is this, uh, these probes in there that start running. It's kind of oh, electricity. Oh, yes. And they yes. start pulling toxins out of the bottom of your feet. Now, I've done this once, and I know that um, I, uh, I've done this once and a couple times. And m the water, I had my feet washed with soap. I know they were clean, but the water just turned brown and blue and orange. And I go like, wow. And she said, oh, this is your liver, and this has to do with your intestines, and this has to do with this. And I go like, wow, fascinating. So I heard about this man who did this. He put this, he went over to this practitioner ionic food bath and he put his feet in there and within so usually the treatment is about a half hour and he put his feet in and within 10 minutes the water had turned black and it had <laughs> turned into a blubber literally a blubber because what these practitioners do when you're done with the session they usually have this little tub that you put your feet in and they put a plastic bag in it so that the the bucket stays clean and then they take it to the bath to the toilet and they just dump it in the toilet when they did his, it literally fell out like a like a jello pudding. And they they filled it up with water again and put it in again. And the same thing happened in the next 20 minutes. And they said, man, this is quite something. That night, this man slept. He felt better. He was happy. He had more energy. He started doing more of these treatments. And sometimes that is what you need. So does it have to be invasive? Is a cleanse fasting? Well, what if you have a thyroid problem? You're low thyroid. You may not be diagnosed, but let's say through the proper testing, you notice that your thyroid is low. Fasting is not always the best option. Mm. I tell people, listen, if you feel that you're toxic, so let's say your body is a bucket of black paint, and you want to get white paint. Well, what do you do? You start adding white paint and it becomes dark gray because it spills over. It goes over the bucket and then you add more and it becomes medium gray, light gray, and eventually becomes white. So it can be a gradual process with the proper diet. So maybe you can go on a juicing fast or you can do a, you eat more salads and vegetables, steamed vegetables. If salad is not your thing, you can do sauteed, stir fries, whatever, start eating more cleanly, maybe eliminate, get your proteins and fats in, which takes away the craving for sugars. And so all of a sudden you start feeling better because you're pushing the toxins out of the body. That is one way. The second way is there is a very interesting um, uh, therapy. It's called GEMO therapy, G-E-M-M-O therapy and the gemotherapy was invented in the late 50s early 60s by some medical doctors in france and belgium and they said you know we know about minerals we know about roots we know about herbs we know about vitamins but nobody has tested when a plant or a tree grows the bud the bud that turns into a blossom right or the sprout that turns mm -hmm. into a branch what is in those buds sprouts saplings of a tree and they started researching it and they found out it contains nutrients that literally disappear when the blossom comes out or when the sprout opens up and when they started testing this and they came up with about 50 different trees the oak the uh, virginia creeper uh, the, the alder tree, you name it, different trees. And they found out that it has the capability when a cell is plugged up. So let's say the front door is locked so no nutrients cannot come in or the back door is locked so the trash cannot go out. Gemotherapy has the capability to kind of go in, open the front door, open the back door, do a little spring cleaning, and all of a sudden the cell can breathe again. And so when the cell can breathe, it can absorb nutrients. So why some people cannot see any progress in their healing is because the cells don't function. They can breathe, they can help them, they cannot help them. 
And so gemotherapy is a very interesting therapy as well that many people may not have heard about. So detoxes, you know, obviously giving the body nutrients, sometimes an enema, maybe a coffee enema. If you have heard about coffee enemas. No. What is that? Very good. So you do, uh, I would do, you take enemas rectally and then you, um, once you feel your, 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 your colon has been emptied by two or three different enemas, then if you boil some, make some coffee, but you don't want to do Folgers and you don't have to do Kona coffee, but some kind of an organic coffee, you make the coffee, you, you take about a pint and you make it in a temperature that you can handle, so let it cool down. And then you put that in your enema bag and you insert that into your rectum. And what happens is that and you hold it there as long as you can, like 15, 20 minutes or so. What happens is when the coffee goes in, it penetrates through the intestinal wall and it goes straight to the liver. And it literally shocks the liver and the liver kind of purges toxins out. And this was a therapy that was originally developed and promoted by a medical doctor by the name of Max Gerson, G E R. S-O-N, medical doctor Max Gerson. And Max Gerson had a cancer therapy clinic back in the 30s and 40s. And he was, he developed this and the, the coffee enema became one of the standard therapies in his treatment. And the, I think that his, uh, Charlotte Gerson, his daughter took over the clinic when he passed. And I think the Gerson therapy is still available. There are books written about it. You can look it up on the internet. Coffee enemas, very interesting. So that's another way to do some detox that is uh, maybe unorthodox, but very clean. And then we have things like uh, ozone and oxygen, mm -hmm. but supplements, sometimes we need to take some fibers. Uh, there are two kind of clays, if I can mention them. Yes, zeolite. Yeah. zeolite is, you can take it in liquid or in powder, zeolite is a uh, is a is a, is kind of an, a, an earthy powder clay that has known because of its structure to literally absorb um, uh, uh, toxins toxins and then takes them out through the colon the another one is diatomaceous earth yes diatomaceous earth d i a t o m a c i o u s diatomaceous earth and that is made from crustaceous little buggers that have died millions of years ago and they have compacted on top of each other and crushed each other down to um uh to to like a powder and you can mix that in a tablespoon in a shake and the more you can handle the more you start feeling the cleansing effect uh there was a gentleman who had bad arthritis in his knee. He was in his 70s and he could barely walk up and down stairs. He said, man, it's so painful. And he started working himself up to six tablespoons of diatomaceous earth every day. And he could run up and down stairs after about three months. As a matter of fact, he said, I'm holding my grandchild and run up and down the stairs without a problem. So it is a, um, it, works. It, 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 it works, it works. And so you can try to, you can incorporate that. Um, Boy, there are so many different avenues to work on a detox. Uh, fasting could work, but I would never do a fast without an enema or colonics. So even if you do a three-day fast, I talked to a lady yesterday. She said, well, I'm going to do a three-day fast. And I said, are you doing enemas? And she said, no. I said, well, you, the problem is if there is no food coming in, it, everything stagnates in the intestines. I said, so that's why people get headaches when they fast mm -hmm. and when they get irritable and when they just feel wiped out and tired. I said, if you keep that colon clean, do a few enemas before you go to bed the first night, take a shower, take two or three enemas. The first time you barely get some of it going. The second time you clean it much better. The third time you really clean out that colon as good as you can. You hold it in your body for 15 minutes, massage it a little bit, and then clean it out. Take a nice shower, go to sleep. In the morning, take another enema. You're not going to eat, so take another enema, and then what you uh, um, and then you do your you, you drink your water or juice, whatever you whatever you're doing, or tea. You don't eat. Take another enema at night. Take another enema in the morning. Maybe do a coffee enema, 
And then you do that for the few days that you're going to do it. And hopefully you have some time for yourself that you don't have to rush off the work or go into traffic. Try to make it a special time for your body. But this would indeed also be a way to help eliminate something that is affecting your body and, and that can affect your mind. How many people are affected in the mind because of stuff that floats from the intestines into the bloodstream and then goes to the brain? It's all connected. I don't know. My mind is blown away. Like, I don't know what people think of this, but it's amazing, like, how much you know. You know, it's like you're an open book. You're reading it in pages and you remember the names and remember the name of the book. It's fascinating. Huh, I, I don't I don't want this to, to be over, but... Um, okay, so that was a great short answer about <laughs> cleansing. Yeah. 